What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're going to be looking at part 3 of the DIY mic preamp build from Soundsculptor.com. It's the MP566 tube mic preamp. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2, I'll put the link up here. And if you're new to the channel, please hit like and subscribe down below. But that's enough from me, let's get into it. So welcome back guys to part 3 of the MP566 tube build. And in this video, the first thing you're, we're going to do is build the power up PCB, which is another little extra circuit board to attach to the main circuit board. And what I'm doing here is attaching the nine pins header um, that will then attach this little circuit board to the main circuit board. And the main thing you've always got to remember with these little headers is that they need to sit nice and flat on the little circuit board so that they line up correctly when you attach them and solder them to the main circuit board and that they'll sit nice and upright. So if you don't get them sitting quite right, then once you solder them to the main circuit board, they might tilt a bit too forward or back and it'll create problems um, with the other components on the board. So you want to make sure that you tape them down to hold them in place solder one leg first um, one of the pins first and then check the orientation make sure that the header is nice and flat and straight on the pcb and then once you've got that you can solder the rest of the pins then next up we're going to put a bunch of smaller components on this little pcb board so the first up is a diode and like with all diodes you want to make sure that you orientate it correctly with that black line matching up with the little line on the PCB. Then there's a bunch of resistors that we need to place on the board and they're quite simple. Just make sure you're checking the values of those before placing them in the board. And with all of these components, it's great to just use that forming tool. Once again, it makes inserting them into the board nice and easy. Once you've got these smaller components in the board, you can turn it over and start soldering the legs. And if the legs um, are a bit close together or a bit tricky to get to, you can snip some of them and then solder the rest of them and then give those a snip as well. And then we need to solder in an eight pins IC socket. And we've got a couple of IC chips we're gonna put in later. We're just soldering, soldering the socket in at the moment. And this also has an orientation. There's a little dip on the circuit board that shows where the cutout on the little um, socket needs to sit. So you get the orientation right. It's really important. And like always with these kind of trickier components to hold in place, I just use some electrical tape to hold it in place, solder one of the legs to make sure the orientation is okay and check that orientation so that the component itself is nice and flat and straight on the board. And then once that's all good, I'll solder the rest of the legs. And then after that, we need to solder two different capacitors. One's a ceramic capacitor, which can go in the board in whatever orientation. And the second capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor. So like always with those, you've got to get the orientation right. Make sure that the longer leg lines up with the positive input on the PCB and the uh, silver stripe or negative side lines up with the other hole on the PCB. And that way you won't have any problems. And then I just bend the legs on these components and make sure that their orientation is nice and neat on the board. And then you can go ahead and snip the legs. And once the power up PCB is finished, it's time to insert it to the main PCB board. And you want to make sure that the components on the smaller PCB are facing that voltage generator at the bottom of the main PCB there. So you can see I've got that orientation correct. And you will need to hold it in place so you can solder it nice and perpendicular to the main PCB. So I use some tape here once again. Um, and then it's best as always just to solder one leg and check that it's sitting in nice and neat and that'll hold it in place. And then once you've checked your orientation, you can go and solder the rest of the pins. And then the next thing to do is to attach the side panel to the green front plate. And there's two uh, black M3 by six countersunk screws. And it's just important not to get these confused with the 3 8 um, screws that are used to attach your module to the lunchbox. 
Um, so just make sure you grab the right ones out of the kit. And the next part is to get the last little PCB and we're going to solder the jack socket for the DI um, input on the preamp. And it's important to insert the component on the side of the PCB that's marked CN1. And then you want to have the input of the jack, so where it's op the opening is, um, opposite the pads that you can see at the other end of the circuit board. So it's facing out off the circuit board, so then it's orientated correctly later. And then once you've got the orientation correct with soldering one of those legs, uh, you can go ahead and solder the rest of them. And once you've soldered the rest of the legs, you want to make sure that you cut these pins short on the board so it doesn't come into contact with the main PCB. So now it's time to actually insert the DI to the main PCB. And earlier on, we had soldered a six pin um, header to the um, main PCB. And what we're going to be doing is attaching the DI to that and then attaching all the washers and screws to the front plate of the module. So when we solder it uh, to the main PCB board, the DI is orientated correctly. So once you've got the washer and the jack nose screw component on, you can start soldering and it's just important to be very careful because the pins are quite close on this header and you just want to be soldering in a position that you're not going to bump that capacitor there that can be quite tricky um, so just take your time be careful make sure you don't bump your soldering iron on any of the main uh, components on the PCB and once that's soldered you can remove the three spaces the jack nose and take the main PCB out from the frame and then the next component to go into the main PCB is this serious looking input transformer and it's necessary with this transformer to leave a small gap between the transformer itself and the PCB surface to avoid any electrical contact between its metal case and the pads that you're going to solder to the board. You don't want them to be touching, so you don't want to get any solder there. So what you have to do is fit uh, two layers of double-sided adhesive tape under the transformer um, between the pins, and then in the... Uh, step-by-step -step directions it basically says it's not necessary to remove the uh, protective layer so that the sticky um, adhesive tape um, is exposed and then stick it to the board but that said I had a couple of issues so I didn't actually need two pieces of tape it seemed to be quite thick and the legs on the transformer were short so with two pieces of tape it was a bit too raised from the board so that I couldn't solder the pins correctly so I just used one bit of tape and I did actually end up sticking it to the board because it actually helped with soldering the uh, input transformer neater and flatter to the board. So, you know, it's up to you. Um, I just used one piece of tape that raised it plenty from the board and then um, soldered it in place. And as usual, I soldered one leg first and then checked the orientation, made sure that it was flat on the board and then soldered the rest of the legs. And then next up were these final two quite large electrolytic capacitors. And like always with the electrolytics, just check their orientation, make sure that the uh, longer leg goes into the positive um, hole and that the silver side goes into the negative hole and bend the legs a little bit and um, turn the board over and give them a solder and then snip the legs. And then the next thing to do is to insert the um, IC chips into their sockets. So uh, you want to be careful with these. Um, first off, you want to discharge any uh, static electricity on yourself because you don't want to short these out. And then um, you need to actually slightly bend the pins inwards for them to insert into the sockets. Uh, just make sure that you're very gentle when you do this because you could quite easily snap these legs off. Um, so just do it gently. Don't force them into place if they're not going into the sockets. Just take your time with it and make sure that they're orientated correctly with the socket as well. Make sure you line up that divot with the uh, cutout on the socket. And then previously in video two, I mentioned um, uh, soldering these larger capacitors into the board, but 
I um, obviously hadn't done that yet, so apologies for that one. Um, I think I uh, may have forgotten to do that step originally and had to backtrack and solder those capacitors to the board at the end. There's no problem with that. Um, it's not going to affect anything, but um, it might be a better idea to do that before you do the IC chips. Um, so there's no heat running through the board, but more than likely it's not going to do anything to those ICs. It should be all okay. Um, so as always, just insert them into the board, use some tape, check the orientation once you've soldered them and you should be good to go. And then once you've done that, um, it's time to uh, do a visual check of the board. Um, so first off, I gave the board a nice brush to brush off any loose solder that might be stuck to the PCB board and it helps clean off any flux and stuff that's there anyway. And then you want to do a visual check and make sure that um, you don't have any missing components and um, check the boxes, make sure there's nothing left in the box. And when everything looks good, we're ready to do our first stage of testing. So what you want to do here is get your multimeter out and get your MP566 test guide. And on step one of the guide, it says that you want to do a basic short circuit check with your digital multimeter set to ohms and you want to use test points ground and V plus and you should get several kilo ohms or thousands of ohms um, and then you want to do the same to test points uh, ground and V minus so they're shown um, on the board there and you just want to make sure that you're getting the um, that there are no shorts before we start to apply power to the board and then the next thing you want to do is get the tube that comes with the kit. And um, I was careful when handling this tube. Um, I was taught years ago when handling tubes not to handle them with your hands directly because of the oils on your skin can damage the um, glass. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually just some sort of um, old wives tale kind of thing. but. Um, I would always handle them with something like a microfiber cloth or some tissue or something like that. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, but I've seen heaps of people just handle these directly. So it's probably safe to do that. Um, but I did this anyway. And once you've inserted the tube safely into the socket, we can go to the next step. And that's to do a powered testing to make sure everything is working properly in a safe way before connecting the output transformer. So what you need to do is if you own a um, XT500 uh, module connector extender like I have here, so I can test outside of the 500 series rack, you plug that in um, and then connect the module to it. Um, if you don't, you can test within the 500 series rack, but it's very tricky to get to all the test points. And um, so I did it this way. And looking here, I should have really um, actually taken out the other modules, but I remember doing this very late at night and I kind of forgot to do that. So if you do this step, take out those other modules. And this is the high voltage check. So you want to set your multimeter to DC volts um, on a 300 volt scale minimum. Um, and then you want to connect the uh, black probe to uh, the OV uh, pin on the uh, 500 module extender. And you want to attach the red probe to test pin number two. And I used grips here and you got to be careful not to short anything out. And what we're going to be looking for is to power on the 500 series rack and make sure that we get a positive voltage of around plus 225 volts. And next step is to do the low voltage check. So uh, you wanna disconnect those probes and take the red probe and connect it just to ten, uh, test pin eight. And after 30 seconds, once the tube warms up, you should get a negative voltage somewhere between minus three volts or minus 3.8 volts, sorry, and minus five volts, uh, depending on the voltage that you have in your lunchbox. And then once you've done these tests, there's a couple of tests you can do within your software to make sure you're getting the right input and output voltages. 
Uh, so the first step you want to do is set the uh, in or potentiometer one and out potentiometer to their minimum and the gain switch set to low. And I forgot to video this, so I do apologize. But what you basically want to do is route some signal into the mic preamp from your DAW and you want it to be a one kilohertz sine wave. And then you want to set your multimeter to AC volts and adjust the software output level to get around one VAC between pin two and pin three of your input XLR. And then you want to connect the multimeter to OV and TP4, test pin four. Uh, power on your 500 series rack and then the LED should be off on your uh, input for the 500 series module. Then you want to turn your potentiometer input, so that's actually the bottom um, dial, uh, to maximum. And then your LED should turn green. And then you want to turn the output gain up and you should start to get a red um, light on the LED. And you should be reading about seven volts AC on the multimeter at this point. So that's just saying that you're getting enough input and output gain and everything is registering signal wise correctly. And then if you pass all the uh, functional tests, then you can insert and solder this output transformer. So it's pretty easy to do. Really, you just need to put it in place uh, like you would any of the other components make sure it's orientated correctly first, uh, solder one of those legs, make sure it's sitting in there properly, and then you can solder the rest of the pins. And then it's time finally to mount the whole PCB back to the uh, front and side plate. So uh, first off, you wanna make sure that you put one of the plastic washers back on the uh, DI jack socket, and then you can place the main PCB in the frame and make sure that everything goes through the front panel nice and neatly. Then you can screw in the jack nose for the um, DI input and make sure that you have the plastic spacer uh, there as well. And then you can attach the PCB with uh, these four 25 millimeter spaces with their lock washers inserted so that'll hold the main PCB in place to the uh, full uh, panel and then you just want to attach the two knobs for the front panel for the in and output volumes and all you need to do is make sure that you've wound them completely one way it doesn't matter which way and then you line up the marking on the dials there um, to orientate it with it's being fully wound in that direction. And then once it's in place, you can tighten up the little screw inside the knob so that it attaches to the potentiometer and then it should work nice and easy. And then once that's all done, you can attach the cover PCB, which covers the tube and the transformers. And you just use uh, four of the M three by six countersunk screws. These are silver, these are pretty easy to find. Um, so attach that, and then you're ready to put the module back into your 500 series rack and do some basic sound tests. And all you basically wanna do is check that your mic pre is working and then also check the di and make sure that's getting a nice clean signal as well and if there are any issues you want to go back through some of your steps and find any possible faults that you might have had but should be all working and hopefully you enjoy the preamp uh it's a great awesome sounding pre and it's one of my favorite preamps in my collection so i hope you enjoyed this video all right, so that's the end of part three for the final build video for the MP566 Tube Mic Pre from SoundSculptor.com. I hope you enjoyed this build video. And if you're interested in seeing any of my other build videos, I'll put a link up here. And if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe down below. And if there's any other mic preamp builds you'd like to see on this channel or any other DIY solutions for the home studio, please hit me up in the comment sections down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.